Hey YouTube, it's me, R Squad 911 back again with another DIY video. I'm just continuing on from my last video uh, where I did the hat light on the main body and now today I'm going to attempt to do the hat light uh, on the barrel end. Um, so we're going to do hat light and we're going to replace the fake switch here with a real switch so i'm gonna swap out this mode switch to this switch to here and then turn that into a light and that we're gonna tap into the power from here um, and just a recap we're doing a 2.2 volt leds that i had to wire myself um, and then these resin printed hats from etsy from Punk Rocket Pops uh, from the UK. I'll link a description below, and these are just from Amazon. These are these momentary uh, switches, right? Normally closed when you press it, it turns on and then it pops back up. All right, so what did I do here first um, that I did off camera was there is two plastic covers that I drilled out, and you can see that it's still stuck on the drill bit there that was there. So you just kind of drill it and then kind of wedge it a little bit and it should break the glue and pop these plugs out, which exposes two screws, which I've unscrewed right now. And I'm just going to figure out how to pull this barrel off. And I believe it's by removing these screws. Unscrew there, pop that spring off. That's on there pretty good. Just remember the fatter ring is for here and the smaller ring is for there. And I believe we unscrew this. Now the problem with my setup is that I won't be able to remove this acrylic tube from the barrel because I have uh, permanently attached this ring here. Um, so the problem, oh, that's tight. Uh, the problem is this is supposed to be removed this way, down um, towards the body. And I can't do that anymore because this is here. So I got to figure out a way to still run the wire up through here. So it'll be easier for you guys once you are able to remove this. Okay. So that is pretty simple. See right here, it already just, I could have just removed it. But because my gun rings are, I have it epoxied on. Uh, it is stuck. All right. So that's off like that. How will I run wires through there? I'm thinking maybe I can get rid of this ugly rubber piece and actually run my own wires through there. Or I gotta figure out how to split these. I believe that you're supposed to remove this ring. That's how you separate these two halves. Of course, it would be great if I could remove this, but I don't want to break this wire out. So let's let's try. I have everything zip tied already. 
Uh, that one doesn't seem to be zip tied, so I can remove that. simple and then is that one zip tied it is so I have to remove this one too and I need to get some snips but I took the whole uh, connection off of it, but I can just insert it back over the pins, which is fine by me. And then I got to figure out how to pop this out. I might just cut it out completely. Okay, guys, I've kind of scratching my head about this and I don't I can't get this ring off of here I think the factory used too much glue this ring I could separate it but if I can't get this ring off there's no point in actually being able to separate and then I'd have to drill out these two I think there's screws underneath these caps so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the bottom of this. At first I wasn't sure if I was going to cut out the whole bottom and then I could just glue it back over top. That's still an option or am I just going to just cut a door here and then I can place that piece back over top with some epoxy. What I'm going to do is going to cut out that door. It'll expose everything in there and I can put in all the switches. It'll be easy to work with and then I can remove this wire here and I'm going to fish a wire, like a hard wire over there, and then fish the wires back through, get rid of this fake stuff and have actual wires going into there, maybe heat shrink it, and then it'll look nice, like a real wire versus this uh, rubber molded plastic. Yeah, so I'm just going to cut an opening right here. And yeah, wish me luck. Yeah, I can just wedge it. Okay, so that's okay. That's it there. And what's nice is I'm going to keep this there. I can screw it in still, and then I can just fill around it with uh, epoxy. And it'll be good. All right, no wires cut. I can pull out the fake hat light button. Like so, perfect, it's nothing special, it's literally a momentary button that this thing activates. That is the hat light there, well not, fake hat light. And before I used to think that this button actually moved inside of it, but it's not, it literally just sits on top of this. And it clicks. Okay. Oop. 
guess we can have the barrel extended now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this switch, replace it over there, and then wire it into there. I probably don't, these were pre-wired. Is there a positive and negative on this? I guess it doesn't matter because it's a switch. But I'll probably just take these wires off of this and then solder those wires directly onto here. Uh, but in, I'm going to test and see if it works by soldering these connections onto here and then test the button to see if it works. So I'll do that for you guys so you guys don't have to, to worry about stuff like that. And then this is the hat light that I'm going to put here. That will have to be glued because the hole here is just massive. But this hat light will kind of cover up where it is. And then with some hot glue, it should be okay. I might epoxy it so it just makes it more permanent. It would be crappy if this fell off. What already looks 10 times better than that. Okay. I'll swap this thing out for a soldering iron. This stuff, this works Maker X stuff is amazing. Like you have a Dremel, take that off, that, and then where is my soldering iron? I have a soldering iron here. Just connect it and turn it on and just wait for that to heat up. And we are good to go. Um, while the heat's up, I am going to go get my pack so we can test to see if that button works. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. Okay guys, I'm back. I'm going to solder this onto there. Not sure which one's positive or negative. I don't think it really matters. To be honest, doesn't say on it. Probably tin these a little bit. Quick and easy. Of course, I should be using something to hold this down, but I'm just doing this so I can just get this done quick. There we go. Again, it's not permanent, so I don't really care um, how well that that fits on as long as I'm not shorting them together. It should be okay. Thing on. Why is the other switch? Okay. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so we're good. Where are all the switches? Come on. Okay, so yes, you don't need this little circuit board thing there. 
as we just tested right now. So all I need to do is cut those wires and solder it directly onto the switch. Or I could leave it like that and just stuff it all in there if there's room, but we'll see. And then we're going to have to figure out how I am going to get the LED wires to fit through that little hole to get into to get into uh, back here. Now I'm not going to go through the barrel. I'm going to use it through here. So I'm going to cut that off and use whatever holes that are here and feed it through. That's going to be fun. So I'll feed it through, go underneath this barrel here, and then it'll come out and tap into this light here. And I'll just solder it to the bottom of there. Okay. So I will have to kind of make the hole bigger there. So I got to drill it very gently so that I do not damage the wires. This is going to be fun. I'm just going to do it beside the wires. Okay, perfect. I don't know if you guys can see that. But there's, I drilled a hole right beside that set of wires there, so I wouldn't hit it. Those wires there, that, that's plenty of wire. So what I'm gonna have to do is, I'm going to cut it. Okay. There you go. I actually just did that. <laughs> Will this plug push through? Yes, it does. Huh, kind of like a, kind of just stops in there. So I may have to drill that through. Hmm, I was hoping that I could just run like maybe like a coat hanger or some thick wire to poke through there. Well, I'll probably go to the smaller side and then try to get there and then I can just fish the wires through. Uh, but right now, seems like there is an issue because that rubber is just stuck there. Now, maybe it looks like a plug like that, so maybe that's what's going on, but that's no problem. I will just drill right through it. Well, looks like it just fell. So now we have an open area, which is nice. So I will now, hmm, I have to get some thick wire and then I'm gonna to try to fish it through there. So I have my wire here, very thin. Guess I only need about that length, so I will cut it there. It's less cumbersome. There we go. I miss doing this on my ping pong table and not in the basement kitchen. This is going to be you almost need pinpoint accuracy. Jeez. So I was able to get this through the hole. Uh, I had to separate it again from the wand. Then I can look down it and I can kind of see the hole and I push it through and uh, we're good. Um, so, so I gave up on trying to pull this through. I'm going to have to do one wire at a time. So with the metal rod I had through, <clears throat> I tied one wire through it and I pulled it. And there we go. It's a 
pretty easy to pull through. And now I will take another one here and I will tape it to here and I will pull it through so then I'll have two. Okay, so we just get it as thin as possible like this. And then we just pull this one through. There we go. Whew. All right, so I'm going to clip the wires even here. That's the two wires to the LED. And then these wires here will go to the wand. I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to give it some length, some extra wire here. So I'm not concerned with that. There we go. And then I think I will put some heat shrink on that or some electrical tape. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet, but what's good is these ends are clear and we will be fine. Okay. So these LEDs, these wires will go through here for the LED and this, I'm just going to cut them. going to cut this away like so I'm going to take this nut off just to make sure that we are the correct size for that it's exact size so how do we do this if I cut that away and it's the same size Do I just have it sit on top? I think having it sit on top of that will be fine. All right, so now I gotta figure out how big to drill this one. Let's start off with this. Okay, let's test it again. Can I push it through? I did. Okay, we're in. There we go. Get the nut over top. So that it doesn't. There we go. And then these, I'll just solder together there. I think there's enough room that I can just keep the wires in there. And then these will go to the LED. All right, so let me clean up all of this off camera and then we'll set up my soldering arms and then we'll get this done properly because I hate a messy work table. All right, so I'll be right back. And now, so I'll just do a little close up so you guys can kind of see what's going on in there. I am going to be cutting these wires and then soldering it to these two white ones. That's for the button. And then these two will be soldered to an LED that's going to go through there. 
Okay. Now, how am I going to do this? No. It might have even been better if I just soldered it directly to there. And I wouldn't need any heat shrink because really nothing will be touching that. So I'm wondering if I get another switch, I can strip it and see what I can do. So the idea here is to strip that heat shrink off of there, cut the, cut it away, and we have the button exposed. And then we turn, turn these sideways like so. Probably don't need so much sticking out like that, and then I would just solder the wire. Oh, I really gobbed it. the solder on this one. Just gonna cut it all off. Put on new fresh stuff. Bend these like so, and we're just going to solder those wires right onto there. All right, so time to get this thing back up. There we go. See how snug that goes in there. Kind of want to have it turned a little bit. So solder there and solder there. Okay. Put this nut on. Secure it. And now, and then we'll strip these and then solder them onto these contacts. These wires are so hard to strip. Okay. Whew. Don't have much room to play here. I'm also going to turn the switch around a little bit more. So I can access it better. I'm going to put these wires through here. Out of the way. Go. Going to tin these. Also going to tin. That. These wires are in the way. Did I mention that I hate working on wands? There we go. Okay, got some tweezers here. So 
That's one. And of course, that is super close to that solder. And this one's going to be two. Hopefully my head's not blocking it. But... Okay. And now that button is soldered and wired up. Now we strip these two. And I now have to find another orange LED bulb because I've already wired this one. So I'll just leave that for a spare for later on. And I'll zoom out and I'm going to go get another LED. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Have the little LED here. Uh, you can buy these on Amazon. They're 2.2 volts. You don't need to add a resistor in it because it's the exact same voltage that the board gives out. 2.2. Don't want to go 5. Don't want to go 2.2. I think it's 2.2 to 2.8. That's the variance. And you're going to have to solder leads yourself. I haven't found these pre-wired. Uh, one side is long and one side short. The long side is the anode. The short side is the cathode. Uh, so the anode, which is the long side, is positive, And the short side, the cathode, is negative. All right. Okay, so we're going to strip these wires here. And then... We are going to solder it onto, onto our LED. All right, I'm going to strip that, strip that. So let's uh, set this up onto my soldering arm here. I highly recommend if you're doing some soldering to get one of these octopus arm things because they're so good. Okay, let's try to remember that this side is a negative. It's going to be shorter. No, I'm just going to remember. This side's positive, that side's negative. Okay, turn on the Soldering iron. And you know what I almost forgot? Heat shrink. Should probably get thinner heat shrink, but this is all I have. Of course, I want to get the threads kind of wrapped around the LED there. And then I can apply my solder to hold it all together. Again, I almost forgot the key shrink. And there we go. I mean, that's probably not the best soldering job, um, but it looks like it's going to hold. And put the heat shrink over top.
and this is adhesive lined heat shrink so you'll help insulate it okay I'm gonna be a little lazy and find my lighter don't want to get my heat gun out There we go. Let that cool down. Release that. Release that. And this is how we have the LED. All right. Okay. So move this out of the way. I served ooh, that on top of my soldering iron. Could have melted the acrylic but hmm, only marked it a little bit it's fine adds to the weathering okay so it's gonna sit like this I'm gonna bend these in I might pull some of the wire so there's not so much in there but I think that is good for now and then, of course, once I mount it, I have to run the wires through here, underneath, and then solder it onto there. Okay, so now I can just bend this. And we're good. And now I just need to pull these wires more through. I have them sit under that edge with a little bit more. With a brown one. Yeah. Perfect. And then away from the screw hole, got to hot glue this in. Okay. So I get the hot glue gun, glue that in. Actually, I might use crazy glue. So, yeah, I'll go get the crazy glue and I'll be back. Actually, before I go crazy, because crazy glue is permanent. Hmm. I find that crazy glue sometimes reacts with different plastics differently, especially acrylic. I'm not sure how it does with 3D prints on resin, but it ends up uh, kind of melting it and clouding it up, which I do not want. So hot glue might be the best bet. And also we have to be careful with hot glue because it's hot and these resin printed pieces sometimes do not like so much heat. For now, I'm gonna have that pulled out. And then I'm just gonna hot glue around that. And then hopefully I can flip it over quickly enough and then find center. And then I should be okay. Yeah, so we'll just fill that up with hot glue. Should be good. Oh, it's fairly center. Okay, I'm gonna push hard now. Put that hot glue there. Put that hot glue there. Put some more there. Gonna fill it all up. Okay. Hopefully that didn't shift much. I can still move it around as it dries. I think that looks pretty good. Right? Yeah, that looks good. Just let it dry up. Give it a few minutes, let it cure, and then I will glue in the LED. Okay guys, 
um, everything is all solidified. Everything's all cured. Everything's solid. I've uh, put a dab of hot glue over the LED. And look at that, lots of space in there, lots of room. And then we, this will be the cover that I'm gonna put back on there. Hopefully. Hopefully it'll fit. <laughs> Not exactly sure how it goes back on. I think it goes like that. These wires might be in the way ever so slightly. You might have to cut off <clears throat> these. I think that's what held in the old circuit board. And that's what's getting in the way. So I'll just cut those like that. And yeah, that's how it will go. Put the screw back in and then I'll just epoxy it back together or I'll just leave it and just put heat shrink on it just like an afterlife. But for now, um, that's just gonna have to do. Everything solid, that button is unencumbered. And yeah, all right. I think it's now time that we put everything back together. Okay. Let's see here, it's gonna have to go like this. Line up these holes. Good movement. That. Get all the pieces that I need. <clears throat> Small side there. That side there. Don't know where my, where did my, oh, right in front of me, of course. Screw that into place. <clears throat> then, of course, I'm going to wire that through there. But for now, I'm also going to get some heat shrink. Not sure how much I'm going to do. Guess I don't have to be so perfect on that. What I want is I want this black heat shrink to fit through there. Kind of plugs up the hole. Okay, that's kind of how I want it. Uh, this will fit through there too. So maybe I'll just have thin heat shrink like that. Okay. Do I do a thicker one just to give it some? I'm not even sure. Maybe we'll do it smaller tripods in the way of my drawer to get scissors and bend it like that all right
few things I want to do here. Properly put that into there. Go underneath here. Could remove the barrel again. There we go. Let's just remove this completely first. Let's figure out how we're going to run this wire through without being cut. Through there, will there be enough space? Do I have to cut a gap? I don't wanna, should be fine. This is so tedious. I, did I say I hate working on wands? Well, I do. Okay, so lots of room there. I think that's good. And if you can hear her now, she just ran in through the door. As I said, I have to go in the basement and finish my video. She is super loud. Okay, there we go. And then I remember red was positive and yellow was negative. There we go. Okay, so, you know what? I'm just gonna take that out to double check. It'll probably be easier for me to solder it with it out anyways. Yellow is negative on the left side and red is positive. So again, I am going to use my sanding sandpaper <laughs> just to block it off so we don't get any solder on there. And I'm gonna solder these wires, which don't need to be this long anymore, but I will still give it some length just in case. Too much on the end. Short. Turn on the soldering iron. That heat up. And while the solder heats up, I'm going to use one of these. Hold that in place. And now going to tin these ends here. Oops. 
go. To do a negative first. There we go. Okay, so going to screw that back into place. daughter she's practicing. She got an audition for the new Karate Kid movie. Uh, she's been reciting some lines for the audition so it'd be pretty cool if she got it. So yeah. Okay well, now that that's all Wired up, let's test and see if it works. Moment of truth. Hopefully it's all in screen. Yeah. Nice. We have success. I'm just going to try to button everything up. So I also want to show you guys some screws that I used. So instead of plugging the holes back that you drill out, I'll show you guys in one sec once I button this up. And I'm also going to heat shrink the heat shrink. Okay, let's do another test. That light, that light. Boom. This light and that light turn on. Once I turn this on, this starts flashing. Cool. I think I am gonna change that to a white LED. Okay, everything's working.
This is working perfectly. Happy with that. All right, everything's good to go. Yeah. So yes, what did I want to show you guys that I did? The holes that I drilled out, I put in some M3 20 to 25 millimeter Allen head bolts. And when you screw them down tight, they sit flush with everything. And I even do the same thing with uh, the, uh, the rail. Um, those Allen heads fit perfectly. And I also cut out snipped off those old plastic fake allen heads and i screwed in actual allen heads and these are m3 i think like five millimeter they're really short and i just screwed them right into the plastic and it looks so much better okay so how are we going to do this part here so this doesn't want to go in anymore. So I'm gonna to have to probably pull some slack, but it kind of looks cool with like the wires just kind of hanging out like that. So yeah, I'm gonna fix that all up off camera because this video is probably already way too long. And uh, yeah, once I have it all set up, we'll heat shrink it and we'll see how it looks. All right, be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. Got everything kind of cleaned up now. And all we have to left to do is to heat shrink this part here. And we're just going to do that just like this. Hopefully I don't melt any plastic. That's pretty good. kind of wishing I did longer thick but I think kind of does the trick for it I mean it's cleaner oh now I have that Let's see here it's pretty clean I mean that hole there it's pretty obvious. I wish actually that I moved the fatter part inside there and I could stuff it, but I think that looks pretty decent. It's really hot right now, that's why. And I think, I keep saying I think, but I think that's gonna be okay. Yeah. Ultimately, it probably would have been better if I drilled a hole here and put the heat shrink or the wire through there, but then I'd have to fill in that hole and that's not something I want to do right now. All right, so that is it. Let's fire this up one last time. Get the heat gun out of the way. Make sure all the switches are off. Insert that on there and we're going to fire it up turn off the lights boom so we did this hat light install really really easy uh, we did that uh, in a previous video you can look for that um, and then the next switch will turn on the bar graph this light well, actually, I'll turn on all the lights. Boom. So far, so good. And then finally, activate. And it starts flashing. I think that looks pretty good. And then, yeah, we're gonna test the uh, switching modes. Actually, we'll open that up. 
So we got slime mode. Now we switch it again. Frozen mode, or ice mode, frozen empire. And we got the blast mode. Really cool. And regular mode. All the lights look great. Yeah. Shut that down. Turn off these lights. And turn off the last lights. Everything looks awesome. I'm gonna turn the lights back on. And then I'm gonna show you underneath what I did with the wand here. How I patched everything up. So, like earlier I was telling you, I put those uh, M3 uh, Allen heads. They're about 20 to 25 millimeters and they go in nicely. You might just need to drill the existing hole just a little bit bigger. Uh, just a little smaller than the threads going in and then you can thread it in quite easily and it locks in to place. And then for here, I put one here. I had to cut the bolt down. So unfortunately, I didn't deburr the end when I did that bolt. Uh, so now I just put in a fatter Allen uh, cap head or button head bolt. And I think that looks pretty cool. That looks nice. And then this one I'll keep flush and I'm gonna fill that in with uh, some epoxy. I'm not gonna do it just yet. Um, I'm not sure if I wanna change this grip. I did order um, resin grips from Ben of Kent, Be okay on Etsy. And I was gonna cut that in and epoxy in the 84 style grip. Um, but I do worry that I'm going to lose some structural integrity because this is molded one piece. It's much stronger. I'm worried that when I epoxy it in, maybe my crack off or when I cut it, it's going to weaken this. So I'm fine with that. Um, I do have the Harson 3D print uh, cover here. I've been sanding it, as you can see. Um, that just pops over top just like that. It's a little bit bulky, so I kind of prefer it without. Oh, it's so much, so hard to get it off. Okay, there we go. And uh, maybe just leave it with that. And when I put on and off the Harson 3D, it kind of scratches off my my paint there. But you know, it's all part of the weathering, I suppose. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Hopefully, uh, you guys that that helped you guys with doing this install. This hat light's super easy. This one was a little more daunting, but I believe in you guys, you guys can definitely do it. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, please like and subscribe, comment below. Sorry that this video was so long and sorry it was like cut up here and there. It's just cameras in the way and me trying to figure out how to fish that through, but eventually I got it, so it's all good. Um, yeah, I'll leave all the links in the description below and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.